Hovey's Knives of China medium utility knife makes six types of fried potatoes. William Hovey Smith, 2016. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, and here we take two different grinds of utility knives, and we work up some really different varieties of fried potatoes. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman, and I'm also the owner of a new company, Hovey's Knives of China. And today we're going to introduce you to two new knives, and these are our medium utility knives, and we're also going to investigate rather thoroughly what most Americans know as French fries. Well, the usual thing is, to make French fries at home, you go out and you buy you the biggest potatoes you can find, and pay the most for them, and then you take these up, and you cut them up, and you throw them in some grease, and you fry them up, and salt them, pepper them, and serve them. Yeah. Well, uh, there is a lot more to do with fried potatoes than just that. Several different ways you can approach the problem. Several different ways you can dice them so that they have different taste results and also different health values. Well, that's what these spices are on front of us. But first, a word about the knives. We have a smaller utility knife, which we introduced in a previous video. And this is the medium one. This is the one for a guy like me with a hand like this. And it goes like yay. It also has the distinctive scooped point like this, so you can use it for intricate carving and cutting if you need to. And it comes in two blade grinds. This is ground only on one side. This is ground on both sides. The difference? You get a straighter, more precise cut and control when you use the single ground blade. And we will illustrate. Now the potatoes. I've got two different styles of potatoes here. I mean, most people will consider this a boiling potato. A red potato. This is what goes in your soups and stews. Not a frying potato. What to think about it. You know what? You should. Very excellent frying potato. But you just know how to work it. Same with these. These would generally be considered too small to use for French fries, yet they're much less expensive than their great big brothers. You can put more product on the table with this size potato than you can with this one at a cheaper price. There's also much of what is thrown away, usually, may also be salvaged for food and made up in good, interesting ways, and we're going to show you how to do that. Okay, so we have a typical small potato, and we're going to make a typical small fry from it. And we're going to use this knife, which is ground flat on one side. Now the first thing we're going to do is put a flat bottom on it. Just a general slice. Now that angles it for precision cutting. And when you cut, you cut very thin. Then, you stack them like this. Cut square here. So now you have a square face on this side. These you put over here in the reserve area. And you dice very thin and deep. And this gives you very thin potato fries. And you do the same 
with the remainder of the potato. So this is one cut and one fry right there. Very nice. So I'm going to proceed to cut up a bunch more of these and then we'll put them in some oil and get them ready to go. We now, what you might call shoe string fries or matchstick fries. Now you can take these even smaller. Cut off the ends. Then dice these in half. And now you're approaching a julienne. It's almost a size already. So these are little delicate fries and you can treat them as nicely as you want. We're now going to try to produce a true julienne and you'll notice that the finer we cut and the prettier we want to make our fries and the more regular they are the more potato goes in the waste pile over here. Pretty attractive and uniform, but very wasteful of the product. Because we started off with a potato about this size. So we're wasting a lot of potato just for the sake of getting some pretty fries that are not going to taste any better than ones that are produced with much less precision. And the straight cut here, the straight blade on this knife is excellent for making these sort of precision cuts on your fries. So we have two piles of fries here. For our test, we have a thin, we have a longer here. So we're going to start off with these. And the first thing I'm going to do is just rinse the excess starch from them, dry off some of the excess, and then drop them in the oil. Okay, we wash these in our colander. I'm going to dump them out on this paper towel. Let the paper towel absorb what water it will, and then put them in the oil. There we are. All right, and in the oil we go. An instant fry. Uh, this oil is a, a new canola oil and it is doing good. Yeah, we're just getting started. It's not going to take these little bitty fellas long at all. And uh, once we get them up, uh, then we'll proceed to salt and taste and see what we've got here. We're now getting ready to rock and roll again. And these are our next larger size. These are still smaller than what are usually considered commercial french fries. But some restaurants found out that the smaller the french fries, the more salt they would accept, the better they tasted, and people would come to demand them. As usual, we have a few stragglers there. Come on. Out, out, out. There we go. This is small enough still. We need the smaller salt. Goes on while they're hot. We're going to use still the smaller pepper on this. 
Just a little bit. So these are going to be slightly peppery. And I'm going to put some more chili powder on it. There's a few more fries here, so they'll get another dose of chili. And we will mix in exactly the same way. No one ever told you to do a french fry this way, did they? I didn't think so. All right. Now what we got? Hmm. Nothing wrong with these french fries. If you're a young guy and you've still got some inventive instincts that hadn't been learned out of you in college, then you want to pick up something interesting in a meal cheaply? Yep, cook these. They'll work every time. And people will be nothing short of almost amazed. They're so good. And now we're going to show you the french fries of the 1960s. This was when it dawned on everybody that the thinner french fry was actually preferred, the small one, rather than always the bigger. So, do basically the same way. You cut your flats on your potato. Again, you're losing product here. Now this is a blade that is ground on both sides and it's tending to want to slip off a little bit. I'm just going to cut with this just to give you an example. And you want to come and you want to cut a good quarter inch down. And you're going to have to hold the blade a little bit off because it's going to want to wander to one side. Okay. So there are those cut this way. Now, in that era, there was plenty of everything to go around, so all these ends were cut off. What? All right. I'm wasting a lot of potato there. And now, this top slice would have been thrown away. Probably this one too, but well, we're going to leave it. And you proceed to cut a good quarter inch. So you get three cuts out of one potato. And so you see you get a bigger fry all around. Even though these are relatively small potatoes. Too many that are two of our. And then you salvage one out more out of here. Sort of. Okay. And take another one. Do much the same thing. You might notice I'm having to work a bit harder with this knife. And that's because of the grind of the blade. It's not because the knife isn't sharp per se, but it's because of the edge grind. So having shown you that, I'm going to go back to the blade that has a straight grind on one side. And you can see how much easier it cuts. And how much more precision you have with the cut. Yeah, that is much better. proceed and make some more. Well, we have taken our 60s style french fries and rinse them and dry them. And now we're going to put them in the oil. And using the fry basket to do by the way like this 
is far safer than trying to throw them in the top of the oil. There you go. And results in much less splatter and much less likelihood of getting burned. While those are cooking, we'll show you how to make another style of fry, which I'll call a Hobie fry, which is coarser. And you do not peel the potato at all, nor you do trim it, nor you try to make it square. You do cut off any spoiled portions like that, however. And you try to cut it so that it's about equal volume per fry. Generally coarser than a French fry, but not so coarse as a potato log. And we'll do a potato log in a bit so you can see what that is. So basically on these little potatoes we're about cutting them into eighths. But with these, nothing that is not spoiled is going over there in the discard pile. That's significant if you're trying to conserve food or trying to get the most nutrition out of the food you buy. This stuff is expensive. It should not be wasted. You can see the knife does very, very nicely slump. Yeah, yeah, it's cut. Very simply cut. So by the time these are done, we'll go ahead and rinse these and get these ready to go in the oil. And there they are. Okay, and dump. Now we now have fries that are large enough where coarse seasonings are called for. And this is where the coarse sea salt comes in, coarse pepper, and put in some cayenne. I'm going to put in some chili powder. Okay, mix as before. Taste a couple of these who want to fly away here, but I have to let them cool first. Another point to make is with cooking anything or frying anything, the more uniform the volume of the product, the better the fry you get. You don't have to be dogmatic about it, absolutely. But, uh, yeah, uh, try to cut them and fry in batches of uniform size. Erstwhile, you'll never know what you're doing. Yeah, that's a good French fry. Where you can taste the potato. Good fry. It doesn't give you quite the hit of salt and stuff that this does. But this is a very good french fry. You really want to taste some potato. Yeah, this is a preferred product. Now, for the log fries. <laughs> These are the coarsest of all fried potatoes. And most customarily, the potato is just taken and quartered. Any bad ends cut away. So these are getting to be almost like pieces of meat now. Now here you have to treat them differently. Uh, you do not wash these. It's not necessary because you haven't exposed all that much. But you do take your salt and you actually rub it on the potato. 
try some of this coarse salt and see if that does. And pepper. Now, as a consequence, you've also now I'll go ahead and salt and pepper your grease. Now that's going to be the equivalent of a steak and a french fry. On our log fries, two are slightly smaller, and these are done. So I don't want these to get overcooked. So I'm going to take them out. We've got two slightly larger ones in the oil yet. And when they rise to the top of the surface of the oil, like beluga whale, yeah, then they're done. If you want to stay them, let them stay in the oil until they do that. Well, all the whales have risen. And we're now going to need to backtrack a little bit. These are in fact the Hobie fries. And we have them here draining. And they were sitting over here in the sink and I missed them. And these are our 60s French fries. That's what these were. So, okay, these are the ones with all the skin on and the most thorough and complete salvage of the potato prop. So we're going to get these on the way here. And remember, dump in the basket and then lower the basket, dump, dump straight in the oil. And those are going good. And these are too hot to eat right now. There, there are too much potato in there to cool off quickly. We are now ready to turn out our Hobie fries. They're all floating very nicely on the top of the grease. And drain. sea salt on these. More coarse pepper. And a very little bit of chili powder. Okay. And mix. These are a little bigger, so they a little bit more trouble. Well, hot too. There we go. Okay. Let me get a bigger bowl for them. Now, what about all this? It's only been about 20 minutes, but already the potatoes are starting to oxidize. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with them. They're not spoiled or they're not harmful in any way, but that's what happens when you slice potatoes. That's why you slice them and prepare them immediately before frying. Are we going to throw these away? No, we are not. We're going to make something else fall. But first, we're going to frog. Yeah, I'm trying to get away here. Okay. We're going to cut up some onions. We're going to cut up some cheese. Maybe a few other things 
And we're going to make a potato dish right here using those fried potatoes as a base. In the meantime, how are we doing with tasting? Now our log fries are finally cooled off enough to actually taste. Yep, they're good. Done in potatoery all the way through. You see all the potatoes done there. The pepper and the seasoning stuck because I rubbed them on the surface and they stuck through the frying. Well, most people wouldn't believe that they would, but they in fact do. But yes, that's completely done.
Mix it quickly with the hot, hot potatoes. This is actually cooking it a little bit. As a change. And just chip. Okay. That's probably enough. Then let's stir and get in contact with the hot potatoes. Let's soften a little bit. Pour salt, sprinkle, coarse pepper, sprinkle, to the powder. And we have a sort of a rough and tumble dish in its own right. Now there's nothing that says that everything has to be cooked and melted and fused. It's perfectly well to eat some part things here that are not thoroughly melted or raw. So here we have something here. My tasting panel has informed me it is time for them to render their judgment. Hand nuggies. Whip. Okay. First off, we have fine french fries with a little touch of cinnamon. Mama dog. Good. Herodot. Holy fries. Good. Very good, he said. And there you have it. And this is what to do with your potatoes. So, you can do things different. If you cook them well, they'll keep, be edible even cold. And guess what? Even your hound dogs will like them. But now, this is Hobie Smith, reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. For the past 20 years, I've written about outdoor subjects and often written about knives and including them in all of my soft cover books. So you'll have chapters on knives in all of these, even in practical bow fishing, where I come up with some really unique tools. I also have a series of e-books for muzzleloaders, including muzzleloaders for hunters and hunting big and small game with muzzleloading pistols. I have a new series of business books under the Profit brand. The first of these is Ideas for New Businesses, Finding Ideas for Your Million, A Billion Dollar Business, and here's a little blurb about me and the book. Now, our rough and ready fried salvaged potatoes actually turned out pretty good. Now, these two knives are among 15 patterns, and they're going to be exhibited at the International Show at the Cobb Galleria in Atlanta this June. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.